When we're young, we are told to cherish our childhoods, that adulthood will demand everything from us just to survive, so we should enjoy the time when the world expects little of us, when we can play to our heart's content and have ample time to make mistakes that we can learn from and become better when we're older. But Bruce Wayne's childhood ended violently in Crime Alley that fateful night, and he spent the rest of his life dedicated to fulfilling the promise of an eight-year-old boy. The idea of one man saving an entire city from the evil that thrives within it is inherently childish, but Batman still perseveres. But when a young acrobat loses his parents to crime in a way all too similar to Bruce, he decides to take him in and ensure that his childhood remains. But the childhood of Dick Grayson is far from normal, for his playground is the rooftops of Gotham, and they are cold and brutal. Can the young boy wonder retain his childhood, or will it be lost to crime at the fault of the man who wanted to save it? This is Robin, Year One. Written by Chuck Dixon and Scott Beatty, with art by Javier Pulido and Marcos Martin, Robin Year One is a four-issue miniseries that takes after the format of Frank Miller's iconic Batman Year One. It tells the earliest adventures of Dick Grayson, the first young man to become Robin, and how both he and those around him adjust to this new identity. He quickly makes a name for himself as Batman's partner, defeating several criminals alongside the Dark Knight and on his own. He becomes the light of the cave, being a massive positive influence on Bruce. The two are supportive of each other, Bruce often complimenting Dick for his successes, but still being wary of putting him into potentially dangerous situations. Dick, however, is not afraid to act alone, such as when Bruce is unavailable, he solves the case of several kidnapped girls and stops the Mad Hatter's scheme to sell them to a foreign dignitary. Dick is not Bruce. He doesn't separate himself into two different personalities. The only mask that he wears is the physical one. Bruce Wayne died in that alley with his parents. He never got to grow up. Ever since, he's been Batman, and while he does have people who are important to him and things that matter in his life, it all eventually draws back to the war on crime, to helping people no matter the cost. But Dick is real. Robin is the persona. Grayson tries to balance these two aspects of his life, but eventually, responsibility must take him away from what he wants. This is his first taste of the adult world, one that all children must have. Master Richard, are you happy? Well, yeah, sure. Why? Don't I look happy? Indeed you do. Perhaps I should rephrase the question. Are you content on this path you have embarked upon with Master Bruce? I guess with Boss Zuko dead, there isn't much of a reason for me to do this. But I figure there are lots of guys like Zuko out there. And I made Bruce a promise. Master Richard, always bear in mind that this is his crusade. It need not be your life as well. I know. But somebody's gotta help him. Might as well be me. Polito and Martin's artwork calls back to a bygone era. It invokes the look and designs of early Batman comics from the late 40s through 60s, when Dick Grayson was at his prime as the boy wonder. Not everyone supports Dick's crime fighting. Alfred, Gordon, and Leslie Tompkins are all against Dick spending his young nights fighting crooks with gimmicks and two-bit gangsters. They all want him to have a normal childhood, to not handle the burdens of adulthood until he's ready. Bruce genuinely believes that he can keep Dick safe, that Dick can still maintain his childhood by protecting others, but he knows that Dick isn't ready for some things, that children aren't prepared for many of the horrors of the adult world, and one of those horrors sets its eyes on Dick in the form of Two-Face, who returns for revenge on everyone that allowed him to be disfigured. Robin is warned off the case, but he still follows and both heroes are captured by the madman. 
Robin is then plunged headfirst into the adult world, forced to play Two-Face's sick game of chance, leading to the death of a hostage and Harvey savagely beating him within an inch of his life. When you're grown up, everything has consequences, and even something as innocent as a game can harm you in the end. The cruelty of Gotham's underworld couldn't be kept from Dick forever. Sometimes a child can't be kept from the deepest evils of the world. And in those times, their guardians do all within their power to prevent any further loss of innocence. Bruce uses that power, and fires Dick as his partner. And it seems he's more angry at his disobedience, but truly, he's deeply afraid to lose someone he cares for again. Someone who he thought he was helping. WRONG! DON'T LIE TO ME! THIS ISN'T HARVEY DENT'S BLOOD! Robin's alive. Show me. You have to trust me on this, Jim. If I find out otherwise, everything changes between us. Robin's retired. You have my word. Even after having his body broken, Dick's spirit remains intact. But it's Bruce's coldness towards him afterward that comes close. He can't go on like a normal kid anymore. Robin is now a part of him, of what he needs at this time. Protecting others and fighting wrongdoers has become his childhood, and now he's being denied it. Feeling like a burden onto Bruce and Alfred, he runs away from Wayne Manor, from the warm safety of home into the cold streets of Gotham. But the cold can't get to the boy Wonder, literally, as he thwarts Mr. Freeze's latest scheme. Ultimately, Dick must face what he's on the edge of becoming when he encounters a school of boys trained to be assassins by a man named Shrike, hired by a mob boss to kill Two-Face. The students of Shrike's school are dark reflections of Dick, children who have lost their childhood, whose spirits were broken by a man who wants to use them for his own selfish goals, and views them only as tools. This also makes Shrike a dark reflection of Bruce and how many in the real world view the relationship between Batman and his partners. But that couldn't be any further from the truth, and the line in the sand is drawn between the mentors and pupils. His name is Robin. He's my partner. Dick once again has the choice to join Bruce on his crusade. He can live in normalcy or go out again on those harsh rooftops. And he chooses the rooftops to skirt the edge of no return, to risk the carefree times he has before he must grow up, all to help those who can't help themselves, to help the man who first helped him. You swore an oath to me once. If you put that costume on, you'll honor those words to the letter and never question my orders again. Even if that means watching you die? Yes, without hesitation. I could do some good. Somebody's gotta help him. Might as well be me. Adulthood is scary, and it feels like nobody's ever ready for it, but we're all almost painfully aware of when childhood ends. But Dick Grayson spent his childhood facing off against some of the darkest evils his world has to offer, and he never let his youthful spirit break. He persevered through the dark and cherished the light because of his good nature and being raised by a man who understood him, who saw himself in him and wanted him to be better. Mentor and pupil, father and son. And when Dick finally grew up, when the boy Wonder became a man, he became everything Bruce had wanted him to be. A man who had his childhood, who remains whole with or without the mask, but is better because of it. A man who can face the darkest of depths and remain uncompromised. A man whose spirit is forever unbreakable. Forever youthful.